Hey guys, I'm the one you lost. I'm back from being horribly, horribly ill, and I'm here to show you how I drew this artwork of Crony. So, um, this one was a bit interesting because I, I went for a, a weird, like, almost extreme close-up, where I wanted the focus to be on the lighting and kind of this dramatic look, um, to the point where I, I kind of made the head not the focus or the chest, just purely the light. Um, and I, I had a reference for the head because this is a this is an angle I'm not particularly used to for the head. So I had to kind of look up some references to kind of figure out where in the ballpark I'm looking for. So if ever you're feeling like you just don't know what to do, uh, do a little bit of research and try to find a, a unique head that'll make things look interesting. My, my only issue was finding this angle was so hard. <laughs> Um, not a lot of artists draw a close-up at this angle, so there was, to some degree, a level of improvisation that I had to do. So, it might not be 100% accurate, but I think I did pretty good. So, while I'm doing this, uh, sketch, which for some reason I did with incredible... But, I kind of just was in, like, this, like, state of, like, pure, I got this while drawing it. And... It that kind of just worked. In fact, to the point where whenever I finished a sketch, it um, it looked like a finished artwork. So even my friends were like, "Dude, this already looks finished," and I was like, "Yeah, but it's not." Um, I do think the final product kind of lost something that the sketch had that the finished product really didn't, and that's a shame. But sometimes that happens. Um, you can't always um, get it right every single time. But uh, yeah, I got a little bit off track when thinking about this. But I do want to uh kind of inform you guys what happened and how serious my medical situation got. It's actually, like, kind of crazy. So, uh, let me go ahead and explain that now real quick. So, about a week and a half ago, I had some pain in my lower abdomen, and at first I thought, oh, it's probably, like, something like gas, yeah, so let me just see if I can take anything for that. Well, it was not. It quickly ramped up in pain, and it turned out it was a kidney stone. And I've had a kidney stone before. My body does not do kidney stones well. Um, I have tiny little baby insides because I was born premature. So when I became like 25 and everything grew in, everything grew in too small. So even small kidney stones don't like to pass through me properly. So I, I have a lovely time passing stones when I have them. This is only my second time I've had one. And last time I things went bad, but this time they went really bad. So what happened was I, I spent uh, an entire weekend of just an agony for five hours in the middle of the night. And finally I like burst open to my family and I was like, I literally cannot take the pain anymore. I'm begging you take me to the ER. So they did. So the weird thing, and I'll explain this later is I was getting violently sick, like throwing up while I was uh, having this kidney pain. So on the way to the ER in the car, I had a trash bag with me, you know, and I was like, well, I've never been like sick before. So like throwing up on a kidney stone. So I guess I'm sick on top of the kidney stone. So I get to the ER. They immediately like put me full of morphine and um, things happen. I end up having a fever and I'm throwing up a lot. And they give me some Finnergan to kind of control the, uh, the, the sickness. Well, it doesn't work. I find out later, after going back a second time to the ER, after they kept me overnight, I then went to my urologist the next day. And what they told me is the ER was negligent because they did not recognize the fact that the fact that I had a fever and the fact that my white blood count um, my white blood cell count was over a thousand and I was throwing up meant that I needed emergency surgery to remove the um the kidney stone because I was getting an infection from the blockage and the urine being stuck there. So that happens. They they then perform surgery after two days of me being in constant pain and passing out. They take me to the ER. I'm passing out from the pain. They get me into surgery. They take care of it. And they were like, you were very lucky. You could have died. You had an infection. Things got really, really bad. So I then go home. Well, then a second bad thing happens. I go into kidney failure. 
So we're now counting. That's two times like this one little kidney stone has put me in a dangerous situation that could potentially really, really mess me up or kill me. So luckily I was able to, they were able to fix everything. And then I just had to drink a bunch of water. And with the stent they put in me and the fact that everything is small, I was in a lot of pain. So if you follow me on Twitter, you know that I've been goofy on Twitter lately because I've been on lots of pain meds. So that that's the interesting thing. Um, so that's, that's why I've been gone so long. Things have been uh, just kind of falling out of control in terms of uh, my health. But uh, as you can see here, we have the finished concept, which, as my friends were saying and how I kind of agree, it ended up looking like a finished product already. But in the line art, I went with some extra refinement. I just wish the rendering was a lot better. Um, it's passable, but it's nothing uh, that great. I feel like I lost some of the colors I was going for and it was missing that, uh, that wow factor, but it, it still turned out okay. But yeah, it's it's interesting because the, the I didn't know how serious it was until later when they told me. So I was like, well, that's neat. I guess I just went through my first near death experience. But um, yeah, it was I didn't know that kidney stones could get that serious. But I guess anything is serious when it involves an infection and something like kidney failure. But um, yeah, it, it was it wasn't fun. Um, I've basically from this point forward sworn off soda because I never want to go through something that horrible ever again. And I'm just going to try to do better because the the more the t by the time you get the second stone, it basically means your body is really good at making stones. So it's one of those situations where now I just kind of have to be careful for the rest of my life. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, that's the update. Also, if you've noticed in this artwork, I have a new way of doing eyes, which I think looks really awesome, and I'm super proud of it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments about the eyes, because I'm working on that eye tutorial, so I want to do an up-to-date version with these new, fierce, like, very detailed eyes I've been doing, and I'm like, yeah, teaching that's going to be a whole lot of fun. But, uh, the line art here is, uh pretty pretty thin i've been recently switching over if you've been watching my speed paints to much thinner line art because it makes the rendering stand out more but whenever i also share the artwork with just the line art um it's kind of nice because thin line art looks very pretty especially if it's very precise and i've always kind of strived for that precision and cleanness in my line art even if uh by the end product, people don't see it. I'm at least proud of it, and I feel like I did a good job. Like, I feel like if I'm lazy with line art, um, it, it makes me like my artwork less. Also, better lines help guide rendering. Uh, that's at least my personal opinion. I, I know there are many artists who don't do line work at all who do amazing. So, just because I think that doesn't mean it's 100% true. It's just a, a personal opinion of mine. It does not mean it's a fact. The great thing about art is what may work for one person uh, might not work for another, but they may have a method just as good, but looks just as awesome or even better. So um, art is subjective and there are rules and there are times to break the rules. But for the most part, uh, the cool thing about art is technique and style comes down to the things you learn and the things you're influenced by. So the more influence you have, the more unique your artwork can look. And I wouldn't say my, my artwork is unique by any means. People have sometimes told me that it is, but I kind of see my artwork as looking um, somewhere in the ballpark of modern anime with kind of a rendering style that is a little bit unique to me. But it's nothing like crazy, like out of the box thinking. You know what I mean? It's, it's um, it's typical, but it's it's the way I like to do it. It's also super important as an artist to um, constantly not get stuck in whatever style you're working with, because I I think uh, changing with the times is important with your art. Um, you can still 
update your art style while still making it be completely you. You don't have to throw everything that you've developed away for the sake of um, this style you've settled on. Um, you, your style can grow and change over the years, but still look like your art as long as you take the things you love as new styles come out and people try new things. There are certain things that you can see and be like, I really like that. Let me try that. And then if it doesn't work with your style, you can find a way to change things around and make them work. Um, the wonderful thing about um, style is it's really just trial and error and seeing if things work or not. Um, I really do believe all style is is a Frankenstein's amalgamation of everything you personally love about art and have chosen to learn remixed and repurposed into your version of whatever it is you're making. Style is a wonderful thing that is changing as you do as an artist. So all the time, whenever I'm drawing, like in the past, um, I would say, what, um, three years, my style has shifted a few times to me figuring out what I like and how to do things. And over time, it just becomes its own unique thing. So always, always, always try new things as an artist. And if they don't work out, that's fine. But always try new things. Um, and especially if you're learning art, please, please, please don't ignore the fundamentals. Don't just copy what you see your favorite artist doing. Learn art. Don't just uh, mimic it. Um, understand the fundamentals. Learn realism. Learn perspective. Learn all these things that aren't fun, but will make your art better. And now we're starting to get to the final point, and here pretty soon we are going to start doing some uh, post-processing, which I end up doing really quickly. Uh, I have a post-processing video in my tutorials, so if you look, you will be able to find it. I go into more detail um, on how things work and what they do, and show you with the video how to do it. So I would recommend looking up that video. Uh, it's definitely helpful. I'm a lot better at it now, but I do think it's worth checking out. So give it a shot if you can. So we are approaching the end here. We're doing some color balance to kind of add some blue and all that in it. Because I love reds and blues in my artworks. I, I'm, I'm kind of a pink, purple, and blue kind of guy with my art. I love it so much. So now we're adding some chromatic abrasion using the liquify tool to stretch it out a bit, some dust, um, some add glow, and some strands of hair everywhere. And we are pretty much done. Here's the finished artwork. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell. Helps out a whole lot. I'll see you next time. Bye.